when I get rich, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to buy a motorboat just like this. That's what I'm going to do. You're a piker, Joe. When I get rich, I'm going to buy a lake like this. If you're a good guy, maybe I'll let you use my lake for your motorboat. <laughs> you know, son of that party you're trying to find yet? Yeah, not yet. Hey, what's the story on this thing we're on? They didn't tell me anything at headquarters except to meet you up here and take orders from you. Well, we got a tip from some citizen that he saw something jumped in the lake. So we got to find it. And, hey, I think we did. Huh? Hey, look over there. That's it, all right, Joe. Nice work. Yeah, I'll kill the engines. Any idea who it is? Yeah, some mug, Bramley. Got in bed with his boss or his mob and was invited to take a bath the hard way. <laughs> Lean over with me. Help me drag him aboard. Right. It's a fine job for two cops. Oh, well, it's better than directing traffic. I'll grab his legs. Hey, get a grip on his coat. Right. You ready? Yes. All right. Here goes. All right. That's it. Oh. Rest it on the deck, Phil. Okay. Any idea? Yeah. 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 That's it. Hey, recognize the guy, Joe? No, no, he's no local hood, I can tell you that. Huh. The pal in his coat hasn't been touched. I guess whoever knocked him off don't care if we are able to identify him. I guess not. Anything else in his clothes? Uh, yeah, yeah, this wallet. Uh, no dough. Uh, take a look at his identification card. Name Walter Peters. Address Harrison Hotel. In case of accident, notify... Hey, do you see what I see? I think so. Sure, it's a good thing this was a waterproof wallet, or maybe it was a bad thing. Depends on what Inspector Faraday says when he sees what we're looking at. You've got something there. How do you like that? In case of accident, notify Boston Blackie. <laughs> Blackie, what do you mean? You don't know the dead guy. Wasn't your name in his wallet? Didn't you see it? In case of accident, notify Boston Blackie. I saw it, Faraday, and I read it for you so that you'd know what it says. But I still don't know Peters. I never saw him in my life. Wait a minute. You're holding something back, Blackie? Yes, my temper. Now, excuse me, Inspector. I have a date with Mary. She's much prettier than you. Her apartment is much nicer than the morgue here, so I really must run along. You stay here if you like. Talk to Peter's body. Your mind and his have a great deal in common. Blanky, we fished Peter's body out of the lake this morning. Congratulations. What'd you use for bait? Ha uh ha. -huh. Skip it. I'm sorry I got you down here. But after your name was on that card, I thought you might help us find out what racket this guy was in. You thought? And that's where you made your first mistake. Inspector Faraday. Yeah, Joe, what is it? We uh, just had the police laboratory go over the clothes we took off that dead guy, Peters. So? So nothing. Except that we found they were hand-tailored, good material, and were soaked with salt water. After you dragged them out of a lake, what did you expect? They'd be soaked with kerosene? No, I just thought I'd tell you, that's all. You see what I'm up against, Blackie. I get no help at all from anybody. I wouldn't say that. Salt water, you said, Joe? That's right, Blackie. And the body was fished out of a lake? Hmm. Hey, that's right. Lakes don't have salt water in them. That's what I was thinking. Oh. You know, Faraday, this is getting interesting. That guy must have been drowned twice. But why? Why, he asked me. How do I know why? I don't even know why he was drowned once. <laughs> Oh, Blackie, the next time I come to pick you up at your apartment, I'm just not going to do it. You're not making any more sense than Faraday generally does, Mary. The next time you come to pick me up, you're not going to... <laughs> what kind of talk is that? You know just exactly what I mean. Aren't we ready to go yet? Patience, my dear, patience. The show doesn't go on for an hour. Mm. I get bored sitting in my seat reading theater programs. Well, you could talk to me, you know. Well, isn't that what I'm doing now? I'm so much more comfortable here. You know, I have... A... Now, I know why I wanted to leave here, Blackie. That's either somebody who needs your help and wants it, or Faraday who needs your help but never wants it. Let's not answer the door. Aren't you at all curious, Mary? Oh, yes, I am. I'm dying to see how the play we're going to start. Well, uh, suppose that is somebody who needs help at the door. I wouldn't feel right about not answering. Oh, golly, I guess I wouldn't either. I'll go. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I knew you'd feel that way. Maybe it's only the boy with the papers. No, no, nothing that good could happen to me. Uh, yes? Blackie here? Um, yes, yes, oh, please come in. I'm Boston Blackie. Sorry. Hi, Blackie. I'm Beth. Uh, Beth? That's right. I run a tugboat down at the waterfront. Uh, who's this? I'm Mary, uh, and I'm pleased to meet you. Uh, is there something I can do for you, Beth? Yeah. Get rid of this dame so you and I can talk. 
Blackie, did you hear that? People on the next block could hear that. Uh, Miss Wesley is a friend of mine. Best anything you want to say to me, she can hear. Okay, okay. Blackie, you ever hear of a guy named Walter Peters? Mm, not that I can... Oh, yes, I did. That name belongs to the body the cops fished out of the lake today. It's down at the morgue now. That's the guy, all right. Like to know what the score is about his getting knocked off? Yes. Well, it's nothing to nothing. The cops have got a corpse that means nothing to them, and maybe I can put you next to a murder that means nothing to me, but does to you. In that case, why not tell me about it, Bess? Why not find out for yourself? If you're as smart as you're supposed to be, you won't have any trouble. What am I supposed to do? Be aboard my tug, the Alamo, first thing in the morning. You're on your own from there, Ed. Sounds like you're building a mystery for no reason, but I'll be there. <laughs> I thought you were. Oh, I'm so bye. Goodbye, Ben. Be aboard her tug tomorrow morning. I wonder what that means. Well, for one thing, that means you'll have to wait until tomorrow morning to find out. <laughs> Wesley, friend of yours on shore, did you, Blackie? I wouldn't say that exactly, Bess, but Mary isn't much of a sailor, and she didn't mind. Now, suppose you give me a hint as to why you wanted me on board this morning. Figure that out for yourself. I got trouble enough handling a wheel on this tug. Hey, I want you to take a look at my crew, Blackie. A one-man crew. Hey, Daddy. Yes, yeah, sir. Come on, check a minute, will you? Hold everything up for you. You want me to take a look at your crew, and Danny's your crew, right, Bess? You don't know how, right? Well, Bess, what is it? What's up? Say, who's this guy? Never mind. Just a paying passenger, I believe he is. I'm heading for my supplies this afternoon. How's the coal? We could use some. That's what I thought. Just wanted to make sure. That's all, Danny. Okay, okay. I'll be in the galley if you want anything. Well, Blackie. I don't believe it. I saw that guy dead in the morgue only this morning. He's Walter Peters. Glad you came aboard, pal. I'll know in a minute after I talk to him. That's where you're wrong. You ain't gonna talk to him. Oh, Graphic work on this harbor than a Sixth Avenue. Get it out of that buzz. I don't like you. Say, did you say you wanted to talk to him? That's what I said. You see, this ain't as simple as it seems. Well, what makes you think it seems simple? And, Bess, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to talk to that guy right now. Blackie. Blackie, come back here. Oh, if I didn't have to handle this wheel, I'd... I'd make you come back. You're big enough to have a good chance of doing it, too, Bess. But I've got to find out what this is all about. Hey, you. You down there in the galley. Yeah. You wanted to see me? I most certainly did, and do. Look, who are you? Who wants to know? I'm Boston Blackie. Oh, you're Blackie, huh? That's right, and uh, I, I think you're Walter Peters, only Peters is dead. I saw him in the morgue myself. Now, what goes on here? I can't tell you on account of press, but look, Blackie, I'll meet you later. Keep your shirt on. I'll be in your apartment at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Blackie, either get out of my office or start walking up and down. You're getting me dizzy. What's your excuse when I'm not here? Now listen, Blackie. You listen. I'm getting a call from the FBI any second. They think they've got a lead on who Walter Peters was. What I want to tell you is that Walter Peters wasn't anything. He is. I saw him an hour ago on a tug. Mm. Walking up and down is making you dizzy, too. Hardy, I tell you, I saw him on a tugboat. I talked to him. He wouldn't crack on the tug, but he said that he'd meet me in my apartment at 4 o'clock. If Walter Peters comes up to your apartment at 4 o'clock, there'll be four guys carrying him. That's probably the FBI. Hold everything. Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Jameson, Harbor Squad. Yeah, Jameson. What happened to Walter Peters' body? What happened to Walter Peters' body? Well, it's in the morgue. That's what happened to it. Oh, is it? Well, I'm calling from the morgue now. The guy in charge ain't here, and neither is Peters' body. What? If it's not you, I'd know something about it. Sell Inspector. Wait, Peter. I know, I know, I heard. Well, pal, what goes on from here in? You still think I didn't see Peters? Oh, this is all I need. First, the guy has fished out of a lake, only his clothes have salt water in them. So he's been drowned twice. Listen. Now it turns out Walter Peters is alive. I'll take it easy. No, it can't be. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. Blackie, get out of here. Walter Peters. I mean, Faraday speaking. Jones, the FBI. 
FBI, Faraday. We've finished checking on that Walter Peters for you. We know who he was. Who? Oh. One of the cleverest smugglers we ever ran across. Customs never could get anything on him. They examined him and his luggage with a microscope, but he kept bringing in thousands of dollars worth of jewels every trip he took. Yeah, I can believe it. The guy is a miracle man. Oh, uh, what do you mean, Inspector? Now, how would you expect me to know? Thanks, John. So long. So Peters is a smuggler, eh, Faraday? And apparently somebody tried to knock him off, but he beat the rap somehow and is hiding on Bess's tugboat. Well, that makes sense. Oh, it does, does it? Nothing makes sense on this case, including you. Blackie, how come your name was on Peter's identification card? Well, are we back to that in case of accident notify Boston Blackie thing again? We sure are. Maybe you were working with this, Peters. Maybe you were in the smuggling thing. He crossed you, you knocked him off. Uh-oh. He had your name on his card so that we'd have a lead to his killer. And you're telling me all this bunk about talking to a dead man just to throw me off. Faraday. I know. I know, it's ridiculous. But it shows I'm thinking. Blackie, what could have happened to the morgue keeper and Peter's body? I have the slightest idea, unless Peter's wasn't dead and I did talk to him on board Bess's tug. How are we going to find out? That's what bothers me. I guess we're going to have to wait until 4 o'clock this afternoon when that guy I met on the tug is due at my apartment. Well, before that, maybe I can do something about it, though. Yeah, what? I've got an idea that tug will be able to pull me out of this situation. The body of Walter Peters, smuggler, is fished out of a lake by police. And Boston Blackie is drawn into the case when his name is found on Peters' identification card. Later, Blackie is certain he talks to Peters aboard a tug owned by a gal named Bess, even though Peters is apparently dead. When Peters' body is found missing from the morgue, Blackie is confused, but he knows he has an appointment with the man he met on the tug. With several hours to spare, Blackie and Mary are en route to the tub once more and stop off at the morgue. You'd better wait out here, Mary. I'll go into the morgue myself. It won't be a minute. Oh, Blackie, I don't care how long you take, as long as I'm waiting outside. There is something about a morgue that, well... Uh... Most of the people inside don't seem to mind. Mm-hmm. Here, my baby. Okay with me. Oh, hello, Jamison. You on duty here? Hi, Blackie. I'm still on the harbor squad. Just trying to get a lead on the Peters murder. Oh. Listen, I was in Faraday's office when you called in to say that the morgue keeper and Walter Peters' body were missing. Oh, that. Well, they're not missing anymore. Uh, say that again slower this time. They're not missing anymore. The morgue attendant had gone out for coffee before I got here. When he came back, he told me where he was and what happened to Peter's body. What did happen to it? Well, it was claimed a relative of his, a big gal named Bess something or other, came in for it and took it with her. Well, that clears that up. Or does it? Huh? Never mind. I can't very well explain something to you that I don't know the answer to myself. Thanks, Jameson. Nice seeing you. Right, Blackie. I'm uh, sorry you can't stay until something breaks on the Peters case. I got nobody to talk to in here. <laughs> You've got plenty of people to talk to, only nobody can answer you. <laughs> so long. Well, that was fast, Blackie. Yes, yeah, it was. Let us stop by. I've got some information, even if I don't know what it means. Let's see, if it's 2 o'clock now, I have until 4 to keep my appointment. We're going down to the waterfront, Mary. Are we? What for, to get a lead on the Peters case? That's right. If Peters is really dead, I want to know who killed him. If he's alive, I want to know what's going on. And I have an idea one person can give me all that information. A girl named Bess. <laughs> Faraday. Faraday, this is Blackie. Blackie, go away, far away. We'll play a game. You get lost, nobody will look for you. Blackie, don't bother me. Kid, if you think you've been bothered before, listen to this. Bess is missing. Bess? The gal I told you about. The one that owns that tug. Not only is she missing, but the tug is gone, too. Uh, neither of them are here in my office. Why bother me? She's the key to this whole case, Faraday. I'm down at the waterfront now. Nobody's seen her or the tug since this morning. Now, I want you to call out the harbor squad and try to find out what happened to her. She's the gal who called for Peter's body at the morgue, isn't she? That's right. Well, what's making you so sure she's the key to this case? Well, I just figured out something. Peter's was a smuggler. She ran a tug. This thing's beginning to make sense. Not to me. It's making sense, not miracles. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she and Peter's were a team. Don't ask me about the rest of the story. I don't know it yet. But I've got to get back to my apartment to meet the guy that I think is Peter's. I 
want you to look for bets. I'll get down to the harbor right away. Blackie Wise is that as soon as you're mixed up in something, all of a sudden everything is mixed up. Charles and Jagger, yeah. make sure you don't overlook a thing. Even if you think it's only a log, you see, yell and we'll stop this launch. Right, Inspector Faraday. That tug is still afloat anywhere. We'll find it. I don't care if we find the tug. I want to find that gal fast. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, 3.30. In half an hour, Blackie's got a date with a guy he thinks is Peters. And if it turns out to be Peters, you'll be searching for another body. Mine. This thing is getting me a little wacky, too, Inspector. I don't... Hey, Inspector! There's a body in the water! Swimming! On the port side! Hey, where's that, Bill? That's the left, Inspector. Oh, you don't have to tell me. Hey, that's right. There is somebody in the water. But, Dane, head over that way, Joe. I'm heading toward it. He's alive. That's something. Careful, Joe. Don't run her down. Don't worry. Well, big girl. Better lean over the side with me, Bill. Yeah. Come on, Joe, you help us too. Come on. Okay, Inspector. Okay, now. Reach down, help her up. She looks all in. The lady, let's have your hand. That's it. Get ready to grab her other hand, Bill. Okay. Joe yeah. and I'll pull. Okay. Ready? Right, Inspector. Ah! 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 all in and no kidding, Inspector. Oh, my. Put her on the deck. There, yeah, that's the idea. She must be conscious or she couldn't have been swimming. Oh. I'm conscious. You, Faraday? Yeah. I'm there. I got a tugboat. You used to have a tugboat. Working out of the harbor. The guy wrecked him. Tried to drown me. We'll get him, Bess. You just lie here and relax. Bill, get some hot coffee and blankets. All right, Inspector. So somebody tried to drown you, and Bess? Probably somebody who wanted to stop you from telling us who killed Walter Peters. Who was it trying to knock you off, Fest? Who was it? Yeah. It was Walter Peters. What time is it, Mary? Twenty after four. Hasn't changed more than a minute since the last time you asked me, Blackie. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Twenty after four. That guy isn't going to show. No question about that. Hmm. We're on everybody's hate parade today, aren't we? Faraday hasn't even called back. Well, maybe his harbor police haven't found any trace of Bess's tugboat, and he hasn't got anything to tell me about. Faraday's a good cop. That tugboat is still afloat. He'll find it. What did he say when you phoned him and told him Bess was missing? That kind of talk isn't meant for your ears, lady. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So what time is it? Oh, Blackie. Oh, I'm sorry. Mary, how do you figure this case? You should have a theory about it. It's so completely wacky, I can't find anything to hold on to. Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a theory. You know, I... Oh, maybe that's oh. the guy I have the appointment with. Don't go away, Mary. Don't worry, I won't. Hello. Blackie, this is me. That guy show up? Not yet, Friday. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because he isn't going to show up. We just fished your friend fast out of the harbor. What? Try to drown it, she says. Only I don't believe it. What do you believe? I think Bess killed whoever it was that was supposed to meet you. You told me yourself she didn't want you to talk to him. She knocked him off, then faked this swimming business so it would look like he tried to kill her. You say Bess is safe? She's in the Willis Hospital. Claims she's suffering from shock, but she's faking. You want to see her? You bet I do. I think you've got this thing all lopsided, pal, and I'm going to straighten out that case and you at the same time. <laughs> This is the room, Blackie. Bess is in there. Thanks, pal. You're a pal. Come on in. Hello, Bess. Hi, Blackie. Glad you're here. Mm, glad somebody is. Blackie, this dame is trying to tell me that Walter Peters tried to drown her just now. Doesn't she know we know he's dead? Wait a minute, Faraday. Danny Peters is dead. Walter Peters tried to kill me. Now, that's really wonderful. As if I understood what you were saying. I can tell you, Faraday. Danny and Walter Peters were twins, right, Bess? That's right. They had a smuggling racket going. Danny Peters would get his luggage examined at the customs, get it okayed, disappear for a moment, and Walter Peters would take his place going through the gate, his luggage all fixed up with counterfeit seals. Good figure in, Blackie. That's how it was done. 
Walter would walk out with a load of smuggled stuff and Danny would hide on board the ship until night when I'd come and take him off in my tug. Okay, okay, that explains their racket. But whose body did we find in the lake? Danny Peter's body. Walter killed him and put his own wallet in Danny's pocket so it would be found. They had a quarrel. Walter hid out of my tugboat, and I was afraid to say anything to anybody because he, he threatened to kill me, too. So it was Walter I talked to on board your tug? That's right. Oh, I just wanted you to see him, not talk to him. I knew you'd find a way of putting this thing together once you got a look at Walter Blackie. Only you talked to him. He knew what I was up to, and so he tried to drown me. Where is he now? Probably at a little joint near the harbor. Nellie's place. Nellie's place, eh? That's all I want to know. Hello, Peters. Oh, it's you, Blackie. Sorry I couldn't get to keep that appointment at your apartment. I'm not. If you'd come up there, you'd probably have filled me with a pack of lies and got me even more confused. Trying to knock off Fess gave your hand away, but good. Fess is alive? And kicking. Kicking all over police headquarters. My friend Faraday wanted to send some cops down to pick you up, but after all the trouble you gave me, I figured I'm entitled to the fun of bringing you in. You call it fun, eh? What do you call this? I call that a sucker punch, leading with you, right? Here, lad, let a lesson. And here's a little homework to practice on. Anybody feel the need of any higher education? Smart boys. A couple of you helped me drag him out of here and into my car. Mr. Peters seems to have peed it out. Blackie, about the only thing in this case I don't understand is why Danny Peters' body was drowned in salt water first and then dumped in a lake. Well, I coaxed his killer to tell me, Mary. <laughs> there was a fight on the barge. Walter knocked Danny overboard, and when Bess fished him out, he was dead. Walter wanted that body as far from the harbor as possible, so he caught it to the lake and tossed it in. Oh, well, there's one more thing I just thought of. How come your name was on the identification card found on that body? Well, that was to make sure that Faraday was called in on the case so that when the body was found, headquarters in the city would list Walter Peters as dead. Walter knew that my name would bring Faraday on the run. That's why he put the name on his identification card and put it in his brother's pocket. All of a sudden, I think of more questions. Here's one more. Why did Beth claim the body of the dead man from the morgue? Well, Walter made her do it, I guess. He was getting a little panicky and didn't want that body around for fear that there was something on it that might plead to him. He hadn't realized the salt water clue we found right away would tip us off if something was screwy. Now, are there any more questions? No more questions. <laughs> That's good. Say, I was just thinking of something. You know, this business of brother killing brother goes all the way back to the Bible. Yes, I know it does. Cain and Abel. That's right. And Walter Peters tried to emulate Cain and get away with killing his brother. Only he wasn't able. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 